do you have another life, another freebie life that you can just start over and play over? And he said, well, no, of course not. And he started chuckling a little bit because he knew where I was going. I said, look, man, here's the deal. If you don't have an extra life, why are you playing life? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, what's going on, there? Doug, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm in this office space in Bend, Oregon, corner office, overlooking. I can see Mount Bachelor, which has got some snow on it still. Just an absolutely beautiful office to, to be able to do this podcast out of. So I'm feeling very lucky. Ah, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, maybe blessed is a better word than luck, but um, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, got nothing to do with luck, has it? You create your own luck. and Yeah, blessed would be a good word. Absolutely. So, Tim, uh, just yesterday I was talking to a young man. I say young. (laughs) Young to me, maybe. But uh, he's a chief a marketing officer for a medical company. I won't give away his name, but shout out to him if he's listening to this. Great guy. Really one of the smarter people that I've met along my journey, which is, I think, saying quite a bit. And Tim, when I was talking to him, he wasn't happy with his job, right? He wasn't happy with where he was. Now, he was getting paid really well, but he didn't feel fulfilled. It wasn't what he wanted to do. And I think a lot of the men that listen to this podcast are in a similar you know, environment. They're, they're getting paid enough. Of course, everybody wants to get paid more, right? We all do. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. But there, he's not fulfilled. He's not growing. He's not learning. He's got no one teaching him. He doesn't really know what he wants to do. But what he does know is that he doesn't want to do what he's doing currently, right? He's just, he feels like he's spinning his wheels. And no one has asked him in previous to this conversation, what is it you really want? So Tim, what would you say to this guy uh, in this state? He, you know, if you can picture him, you know, in this office space that he's in and doing well from the outside, but just not being fulfilled and really not chasing his dreams at this point. Mm, it's funny. I spoke to a guy today with the same conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a pretty uh, common one. Yeah, I hear it a lot. Um, wow. What, what would I say in short? You've got to reconnect to who you are. You know, not knowing what you want comes from not really knowing who you are as well. Um, and as a result, you then often, you know, what we see with men is that they will then, well, there's two scenarios, right? One of is that they kind of then design their life by default based on what they feel they should do in order to either be a man or what it takes to be successful. So they hustle and they push and they force and they grind and then, you know, they make the money and they get the car and they get the home and they get the holidays and the watch and the wife and the kids and, you know, all of it. And then what happens to them is they feel worse at that point than they did when they didn't have anything because by that point they've then got everything they thought was going to be the answer and they then feel even more lost and even more lonely. And the guy I spoke with today, Doug, he was at a crossroads, very successful in business um, but it got to a point where he didn't really didn't know what he wanted, and as a result, he didn't know who he was either. He was disconnected from himself, and as a result, disconnected from his true desires, which then meant he didn't know what he wants. Yeah, I mean, this happens more often than not for the, for the guys of not knowing where we are. And this guy was in the same boat. You know, he kind of he felt as if he fell into this role and I'm putting some words in his mouth, but what I got out of this is he felt like he fell into this role and it was a great, still is, but a great opportunity for him at a young age to become, you know, be a C-suite executive for, you know, a decent sized company, a decent sized corporation that, that has a hockey stick like growth period. But again, he's sitting there not feeling fulfilled. And so Tim, I asked him a question, which I ask the guys a lot. <clears throat> As I said, hey, oh, cool. Do you have a back pocket life? Do you have another life, another go around at this uh, that, that I'm not aware of? And he just kind of looked at, you know, actually, we we're just talking on the phone, but it was almost like that deer in headlights pause you get on a phone call, you know, where the other person just <laughs> stops and you can kind of hear them thinking. <laughs> and he said, 
uh, what exactly do you mean? I'll go, look, do you have another life, another freebie life that you can just start over and play over? And he said, well, no, of course not. And he started chuckling a little bit because he knew where I was going. I said, look, man, here's the deal. If you don't have an extra life, why are you playing life? Why are you using this life as like a practice? If you don't know that you have an extra one that you can just pull up like a video game, which none of us do, right? Then why are you living out your life currently as if it's a practice for you and not actually going after what your goals are, not actually getting in touch, as you said, and being fulfilled? Mm, so true. So true. And what did he say? I said, yeah, you're right. And then he started to open up a little bit. He said, you know what, Doug, I, you know, I've been talking for a while with my fiance and really what I want to do is get, you know, get into nutraceuticals and started telling me a little bit more about what he wanted to do. Um, and I said, look, I said, if you have a crystal ball and you, and I, and I get that you don't, but if you did, and where would you see your life in two years, if you're able to make it any way that you want to. And he said, Doug, well, the realistic version, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a crystal ball, first of all. There's nothing realistic about this scenario. So let's play. If you had a crystal ball, where would you be in two years if you, in your ideal environment? And Tim, that's when he asked, that's when he said, look, I'd be married. I would have you know, multiple companies. I'd start my own business and get out of my own way. He's like, I'm just afraid that, you know, I'm making enough money at this company that this is for the first time in my life, I feel really stable. I feel really secure mm -hmm. here in this job. And for the first time in my life, I don't want to lose that. Wow. Yeah. So that's, Tim, that's when we went into the things that we've talked about the guys in the brotherhood about, uh, you know, when we did the money mindset in Marrakesh in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, I said, look, you know, do you know your numbers? And he's like, well, what are you talking about? I said, look, do you know how much money it would cost you to survive, just to live a base life? And the answer was no. Okay, do you know how much money it would cost you to live your current life? Again, the answer was no. So you got to remember, he was staying at this company for four years unhappy, right? because he felt it was stable and it was providing him the income that he needed, yet he doesn't even know how much income he needs. So it's a contradiction mm -hmm. in terms there, isn't it? Yeah, it's so common. And often, you know, when they actually, you know, we see it with the guys in the brotherhood, right? When they first come in and we map out the vision for the year and they actually figure out what that figure is for them to live their ideal life, it's always a lot lower than they think. Always. It's always a lot easier as well when they then break it down into how many sales is that and what are the daily actions and, and so on. So, you know, there's, you know, we often talk about the clarity being power, right? And uh, it's a dangerous place to be when it's so comfortable, isn't it? Because, you know, often, you know, I imagine him getting into the position that he's in now before he had the stability, he probably felt more free and more comfortable when he had nothing than when he does now, because sometimes with uh, success comes expectation, doesn't it? Oh, wow, I've got something that I didn't have before. I got to hold on to it. I'm so afraid mm -hmm. of losing it. So then it takes you out of doing all the things and being the person ultimately that you were to get you into that position in the first place. And it's, you know, you've got to, you've got to break free from that cage. You've got to shake it, get out of it. Well, yeah, but it also tells you, you know, <clears throat> you know, he feels stability, right, in, in his job, of course, and in, in the money he's making. I don't know if he felt stability in the job itself, the security, but in the money. But he hadn't associated what that means to him, right? He didn't have a number, right? And look, you, Tim, you and I, we teach it, our guys, we love money. In fact, it's, it's the fifth territory we take the men through is wealth right? There's five territories. Number five is wealth and how to not only obtain wealth, but how to secure it and how to make it grow for you. So we teach this and we're, we're, we're big fans of money. Uh, but at the same time, it needs to be money for a purpose, right? What are you going to do with it? Why do you want it? And what's the emotion and feeling attached to it? So this guy had attached his income from this particular job with security, but yet he hadn't defined what security was to him. 
he hadn't defined how much money he really needed. And, you know, you and I know this, but nine times out of 10, when we walk a man that's in this situation through, when we find out really what it is they want, really what they desire, how much it would really cost to get there, uh, it's actually a lot easier for them to break free and live that dream life that they really want to live. And on top of that, when you're living a life that lights you up, a life that's on fire for you, you're going to make a lot more money, right? You're going to make a lot more money and you're going to enjoy the ride the whole time. Guys, I'm interrupting this episode because I want to know, do you feel bored, burnt out, or broken? Discover the system that over 300 businessmen are using to let go of the grind, find inner peace, and unlock unlimited personal power so they can have more time, more intimacy, and better sex while living a life they love without stressing about work or feeling like a fraud. Head over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash 11 to see what this is all about. All right, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, and I think the thing is as well, you make a lot more money without even thinking about the money, right? Because you're having so much fun and you're so inspired and you're just in your zone on purpose taking those those actions that are so, feel so effortless, but they're really moving the needle as well. And um, it's interesting. I did a training earlier this week. Um, you know, every week we have trainings in the Facebook community. And I, I really, when I was coming up with the training, I, I realized that, there was this, um, it actually came from the back of watching, I rewatched the documentary on Netflix around minimalism. And it really got me thinking about the, the conditioning and the sucker punch that society has really delivered men. You know, over the past couple of generations, men have been completely left behind. And as a result, right now, I think one of the struggles that feeds into what this guy's experiencing as well, as well as the attachment, is the fact that we, it's very vague and ambiguous as to what it means to one be a man or one to have success. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been taught that you know, in order to have success, you've got to have more. It's all about more, more money, more sex, more cars, more homes, more houses, more, 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 more. And as a result, a lot of the men we speak with, and you know, I was there too, start their journey setting out for that more, and they then consume more and more things, and it just doesn't. It's just never enough. It just never fills the void that they're feeling within because that void has nothing to do with money. But we are taught everywhere. The message is around us that we've got to, you know, in order to be a man and be successful, you've got to always be more, more, more. But it's just, it's a lie. You know, as men, we've been lighter, completely lighter. And I, I, I bet the guy you're speaking with, Part of his struggle right now as well, not only is the lack of clarity around his numbers and his attachment to security, when in fact, you know, the opposite would be true. But I also feel that him not actually taking control and defining for himself what it means in his eyes to be a man and be successful. Because if he wants to get married, he may want to have kids. I'm I'm sure he's going to want his kids to describe him in some kind of way, right? You know, he's going to want to be some kind of role model some kind of leader in the family. And that comes from him defining his role as a man, what it means to him, and what success means to him as well. And I imagine, you know, part of that sex, that sex <laughs> part of that success. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind? Maybe I've got something on my mind. Um, part of that success, you know, I, I bet it will have a great deal to do with money. It'll all be around quality of life and really living his best life and going for what he wants and living his dreams and being on purpose and all those great things that light you up and help you feel, help us all to feel on fire. And in turn, your cup then continues to be filled instead of your cup always being emptied. That's when you then feel him burnt out and arguments then happen in the relationship because you don't have the capacity to go home and have a conversation and be there with the person you love and, you then skip workouts and you put on weight and basically you start to then go through what we've seen time and time again, which are the five agonies, right? The first agony is emptiness. Second one is then anger. Third one is then loneliness and, and so on. And they end up being in no man's land. 
it's a horrible place to be. It's a dark, dark place. Um, and it's a slippery slope as well. You can quite easily end up there without ever knowing. It's like the penny that doubles every day, right? It's like compounded interest, but working against you to put you into that space. It's, if you're listening, guys, <laughs> it's resonating and you're there, just reach out, ask for help, whether it's with us or whoever. Don't stay there because it's, it's just not a good place to be. Oh, it's not at all. Um, you know, we see it time and time again. So, I mean, this guy that I'm talking about specifically, uh, such a great guy, by the way, and just, you know, salt of the earth, good, good person and just lost, just lost floating around trying to figure out that next move. And, you know, you and I know there's no quick fix. You got to do the work. You got to do the work on a daily basis and you got to do the work regularly and surround yourself with the right people, the right mentors, which was one of his complaints, remember, when I talked about this at the beginning is, you know, he wasn't growing within this role. He didn't have people around him to show him what the next level is, right? He didn't have people to show him where he's going. And, and in life, if you're not growing, and I think this is, you know, especially in the area of your own personal development, and personal development, what I mean is by your own inner game, right? The work on yourself that nobody could ever take away, right? Nobody could ever take away, you know, the work that you do on yourself, the stuff that you have inside of you, your knowledge, um, your skill sets, your interpersonal skills, all those things. But especially when you go on a journey with inside yourself, right? When you're not growing, you're dying. You're stagnant, right? Just like stagnant water, if you go hiking outdoors, stagnant water attracts death, it attracts, you know, mosquitoes, and they breed and they fester in this environment. But if you have running water, flowing water, you know, it's beautiful, it's crisp, it's clean, and it's full of life. It's the same thing what we're talking about here, Tim, is we're talking about the opportunity for growth. Sure, security is good. Nothing wrong with security. It's where your priorities are. Why do you want security? What does security really mean to you and why do you want it would be the questions I would ask him. Um, I wasn't trying to coach this guy. I just wanted to, to help him out in the conversation. But Tim, what, one of the things he asks is, or he should be asking himself is, why? Why am I really holding off from living my life the way that I want to live it? What is that real hmm. reason? Is it security? Hmm. Right? He, he lives in you know a beautiful part of the United States in a very, you know, affluent area. He's doing great. You know, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, right? He loses his job. You know, he lives in an area that never really gets too cold or too hot. It's like the perfect environment. You know, he could live out of his car if he had to, right? No one wants to, but he, if he had to, right? But, but not living your dream, right? We talked about this before in another podcast. The defini definition of hell is meeting the man you could have been. And here's the thing, it's impossible to lie to yourself, isn't it? Like, yep. Absolutely impossible. Even if, you know, you can lie to the mind, but you can never lie to the heart. It's just not possible. You know when you're lying to yourself. So when you're asking this guy these questions and he, you know, it's always the case. We always, often we see it with the guy, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But if you did know, they, they always know. It's just they don't want to go there. That It's like a, a safety mechanism, right? Yep. And you know, the, the reality is with these guys that, uh, well, two things. One, the only security that he's going to get really is from himself, right? It's, it doesn't come from his job. doesn't come from money. doesn't come from his, his pension or his, his whatever. The, the truest sense of security you can have is a sense of security you get from within yourself, knowing that you can just make things happen. You know, whatever that is, you know, knowing who you are, knowing what you want and having the belief and the courage and the energy to be able to then go and get things done and, and knowing you can handle it. Right. And for, for this guy in particular, it's always, they're always nice guys. That's the thing as well. It's like a, it's like the curse of the nice guy almost, you know, they, they're always, they're always such nice guys that we speak with that have such big hearts that are so in, so brilliant. And they've just gone a little bit off track. And you're just pulling for them so much because <laughs> you just see the brilliance. And you're just like, come on, just, just come over here. You know, we talk about one destination, two paths. Just come over on this side. <laughs> come and join us. Come over here. You can do it. Just, just jump. We'll catch you. Just jump. 
You've got to take the leap. Just jump. Just jump. Um, and it's the same thing, you know, with, with your friend, with the guy I spoke with, with the men we speak with. You've just got to jump. Because until you jump, you, you, you're never going to know. And, you know, you will, you will form wings on the way down. You will. One of the things that I personally love to do is put myself in situ. Well, I don't particularly love it at the time, but I know it works for me. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty stressful at the time. But one of the, one of the things that works for me is to put myself in positions where it's just it's, it's got to work. Like backs up against the wall. It, it, there's no like, like failure, so to speak, or it not happen. It not happening and just not an option. It's happening. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I, all I know is, I know, I don't know when I can speak. All I know is that it's happening, and that's all you need, right? You just need to know the ne- the next step. What's the next step? We speak a lot about hitting singles. Just hit singles. Hit a single. Hit a single, because the singles add up to a home run. But you've got to be out there on the field, swinging the bat, to just hit the single and go for it. And when you're there, then take a breath. Then look at the view and then go again. Mm, so well said. So well said. So, Tim, you got this guy in front of you right now. Right? We've already given him some advice here on what we think he should do. Give, and the guys that are listening to this, if you resonate with any of this, and I'm guessing most of you do, Tim, give them a few pointers of what you think they should be doing uh, or they can do right now. Okay. So... What I like to do is take the guys through something called rapid response. Um, so how this works is, like I said, it's impossible to lie to yourself. You, you already know the answer. You already know what you want to do. You're just not doing it. And, you know, you're trying to kid yourself by, you know, diverting your attention to something else. But, you know, the reality is something's bubbling up inside of you and you've just not yet really owned it or claimed it. So I would pose you, if you were sitting in front of me right now while you're listening, um, what I would like you to do is you know, either pull over if you're driving the car or come back to this later. And I want you to answer this question. If you had no limitations, what would you do? Mm. I want you to answer it now. That, that thing that you're thinking about, just say it. Rapid response is the first thing that, is, that comes up for you within that first two or three seconds. You've got to get it down. Just say it. Say it. If you're driving, just say it out loud. Say it. Say it. Give yourself the permission to just go there. If you, if you paused for two or three seconds, you're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're coming up with an excuse. That thing that came up for you when I said to you, if you had no limitations, what would you do? Something pinged inside of you. That voice, it spoke. What did it say? Write it down, speak it out, because that's the thing that you get to do. And that muscle right there that you are feeling, that you're actually accepting and owning, is the muscle that you get to work every day. And start simple. Start tuning into yourself. Start listening to yourself. It might be as simple as tomorrow. You know, when you, you might wake up, you might have it in your diary to go to the gym but you might feel super inspired. So you might you know, do some work and then go to the gym later, or you might choose to, you're supposed to work in the office, but you feel inspired to go to your favorite coffee shop. Cool. Go there. Follow your inspiration. Follow your joy. The more you do this, the more you tell yourself that you trust yourself and you are worth listening to and that your voice matters. So then when you get into positions like this, where you, where you think you don't know what to do, you're giving yourself permission to say it. And once you've said it and declared it, it becomes so much easier. That's a different conversation then. That conversation is all about the how. How do I do this? How do I, That's a different, and there's going to be a million ways you can do it. They'll all work. But the first thing you've got to do is stick that fork in the ground, have the rapid response, listen to yourself, and get it out there absolutely awesome all right guys it's time to take action we're going to leave it there for this episode and we'll see you next time on the powerful man show